Okay, here we go. Ready? <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. I need to make I need to make a sticky for dear Becky and Lizzie, but I don't know what it would say. Oh, dear Becky, and whatever. Good morning. Look, we're matchy again. Unintentional. Not, yeah, this one we didn't plan. <laughs> Yesterday we might have planned a little bit. Hello and welcome to the Sun Dragon Side Show. I the Dear Becky and Lizzie edition. I had a glitchy moment then. I'm I'm still recovering from a bit of a migrainey spell yesterday, so this will be fun. Um, but it's not yesterday. So. Yeah. Brian asked yesterday. He's like, "So how's your head?" And I'm like, "Okay, how do I explain this? It's not just my head." Or like when he asked me, it wasn't the head that was the problem. It was like the whole body. <laughs> Migraine sufferers, you feel me? Um, and then when trying to explain that to him, he was like. Anyway, um, I'm Rebecca. I gotta remember my name. I'm the owner of Sun Dragon Art and Fiber in sunny and very chilly for the first day of April, Brevard, North Carolina. I'm Liz. I'm the minion there. And we are not doing any April Fools poop. Just no, no. It's the first day of April. Okay. Um, before we get going on, on the Dear Becky and Lizzie edition, like today I'm Becky and she's Lizzie, and it's like Dear Abby, yay! Um, I, I wore stuff to show off. So warmies. I wore warmies. And this one may or may not be fully dry because I blocked it last night, but I didn't care because I wanted y'all to see it. And I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to find a way to wear it because it's huge now. Huge. Okay. I'm so impressed. <laughs> if she's impressed, it's big. Mm -hmm. um, this is my Honey Moss Shawl by Andrea Mowry. Go back to Tuesday's episode if you haven't watched it to see what size it was because now i'm going to hold it up again and you're going to see the difference you can probably already see the difference in it definition flatter, it just i it stretch things. things like sweaters that need to be a certain size you don't just want to stretch right there might have been some kind of here's what size the shawl should be on her pattern i didn't care it's a shawl i wanted to open up the lace work part of this look at that remember how it was all kind of scrunchy bunchy I wanted to open this up. I could have kept stretching it. I wanted the the cabling to lay a little flatter, but not be super smushed. I pulled and prodded and stretched, and I have a pack of the Cocoa Knit stitch markers, oh, stitch markers, blocking pads that we sell. Um, there's 18, and I creatively arranged them under this, and I still had to pin a little bit of it to the carpet. That's how big this is. And this is the best way, instead of putting the, the point in the middle, that would have been like, kind of got it. Cause it's, it's asymmetric. This is the thing with asymmetric triangle shawls. It's really weird to try to figure out how to wear them. If you're gonna wear them like a scarf like this, like I have to kind of maybe fluff it over to the side. I joke with Liz, I feel like I'm wearing a tartan or something around my neck. <laughs> it maybe works better as a wraparound shawl because the, it's not, symmetrical i i have a hard time with asymmetric shawls because mm -hmm. like they're not symmetrical. i i wear the, my great grandma shawls and one end hangs further down and it just it, it's a problem symmetry we crave symmetry but then it's a thing to not have symmetry in some of these shawls so shawl pins i think help like if you can so, anchor it or like the the shawl bracelet things yeah. the the shawl wrap things yeah so, yeah if you can find a way to pin it or anchor it. Um, I'm also, before I hold this up, because it's cold outside, and this is not the best yarn. I made this out of old yarn well before I opened the shop, but this is um, one of my favorite cable tops to make. It's from a Patton's book. I will show you the book. The book's out of print. I have like three copies of it at home because it's this little booklet you used to be able to get at Joanne's. But this is wonderful. You make the yoke this way. You pick up stitches and go up. You pick up stitches and go down. The shaping is super simple if you like cables. This is a wonderful pattern. I, they might be selling it individually as an online pattern at this point. So big reveal of this, because we have a lot of questions. No, no, I'm gonna hold it like, I'm gonna hold it this way Ooh. for how big it is. I can't it, even fit it in the it camera. It goes past her knees. If I put it at my- It's on the floor. Okay, if I, if I, okay. I'm gonna make so it just touches the floor. Right about there. It curls a little too. 
comes up to my chin. It's huge. It's, I can still kind of hold it out myself, but look at that. It's absolutely huge. And even now, it the, comes tip to your is, knees. the tip is almost at my knees here. So yeah, five skeins of yarn, but it's massive. Um, another way, because see the, the part down here by my knee is probably the longest, if we're going to consider this uh, a warpy right triangle, that's the hypotenuse. So if I was going to wear this this way, see, it's still, you're going to have one long side and one short side. There's really no way with an asymmetric shawl, I'll show you the back of this. There's really no way to to have it fall in the middle of your back without having you know a part over here because it's asymmetrical but if i had a shawl pin this would still this would be quite fashionable in an asymmetrical way right short over here long you could over here. you could wear it sideways with a long side going down and put the shawl pin up on your shoulder or your cuff up on your shoulder like you could do an avant-garde like this, yeah. right? Oh, but I'd need a pin. <laughs> Even with it being this huge, I'd need a pin. Um, so, you know, I just wanted to show that off and I'm gonna see if I feel comfortable maybe wearing it. See, this is the other thing. If I pull it a little further, I've got a little drapey part here and I've got a longer part here. It's not going to fall in a symmetrical way because by its very nature, it is asymmetrical. Um, before we go to the questions again let's see if i can find it Hang on a second. Back. this is the little book that my sweater comes out of this one right here and it was a little patents book that i bought a bunch online like 10 years ago because my my copy had worn out I've made a bunch of things from it. I really love it, but I think I think I tried looking for it online and it's ridiculously expensive if you try to find the book because it's out of print. I've made, there's a wonderful um, vest in here, which the lighting is not gonna, everything in here, the samples are like white, so it's not gonna show up. I've made this vest before. It's wonderful. Um, contact me if you want. I will say, okay. Um, one caveat on this again, because I have big girls, it's got like a, a square type neck on mm -hmm. it. That was difficult to make it like flattering, but the cables were fantastic. Um, this sweater, I'm still looking for it in here. I think I've already gone past it. Ah, no, here it is. Cabled yoke pullover. Look how fancy and nice it is on her. It's gotten shorter on me because my girls have gotten bigger and my middle's gotten bigger since I made it. <laughs> because I made it, I remember, I, I've said this before, I remember working on this when my niece was in the NICU, which she's about to turn 12. So this has some life on it. And I'm wearing it today because it's a pretty warm sweater, mostly because of the neck part. But I will also say the sweater I wore in today is another super old one. I think both this and that were made out of like Lion Brand Woolies or one of those, which is not really 100% wool. Maybe it's the, the, not the thick and quick, that's the thicker stuff, but um, lower quality yarn with a higher acrylic content. We sell some stuff with acrylic content here in the shop. It's great for machine washable for what, if you don't wanna spend a whole lot of money on something, but if you don't spend the money, it won't be as warm. I'll just, yeah, I was wearing a sweater into work today and I was cold because it doesn't catch the warmth as, as well as some of my thinner sweaters that I've made since the pandemic started out, out of, of the fluffy stuff, out of the fluffy alpaca and merino or wool or whatever, just putting it out there. But sometimes you have to knit within your budget. So if, if you get it, if, this, I, I was knit within my budget. When, when I was buying Joanne's yarn, I tend to go towards the um, fisherman's yarn. Mm -hmm. it, it's 100% wool and it has a little lanolin in it. Yeah. So it feels just a tad bit sticky, mm -hmm. but, but it'll, be warm. it'll be warm and it'll repel water. Like Ooh, ultimately nice. you could wear it out, you know, fishing. Lanolin, technically sheep sweat. Yep. And you might think that's gross, but it repels water. It's pretty cool. 
So it's it's an awesome natural fiber. Natural qualities to things sometimes sound gross when we tell you what they really are, but most but it's most there. yarn so. in the yarn world mm -hmm. has been stripped of lanolin because they take lanolin and they put it in a billion other products like lip balm and lotion and or they they they're doing all kinds of things to the yarn yeah to get it ready you know, with the dyes and the other things yeah. and things not that dye takes out lanolin yeah. but you know. Um, and then superwash is a whole nother yeah. beast because they're stripping off not only the lanolin, but the scales that are part of, when you look under at wool under a microscope, there are scales in there. And that's what clings to, that's what makes a lot of wool, like again, impervious to water and keeping heat in. But that also means when, it, when you heat and agitate it, those scales open up and then they latch onto themselves and that's how felting happens. And if you want- One wanna, big glorified mat. Yeah, but it's cool science wise. And if you want something that is made of wool but can go in the washing machine, because we all like easy care now, especially if we have kids, um, it's going to strip all that. Yeah. So, and it, it doesn't function the same way anymore, but it still could still be warm, but it doesn't function the same way. Anyway, all this fun talk that we're doing right now is not addressing our dear Becky and Lizzie questions, of which we had none at the end of, at the beginning of the week. And now we have three. We have three. Two of them are real easy. And I'm going to go to those two. You're going to knock or, them out first? Well, the first one is super fast. Hang on. Our microphone's not on. Oh, no. It's not plugged in. It is, oh, plugged, wait, it in. is plugged in. I didn't plug in the camera. No, it looks like it's the sticky out a bit. At we're gonna source oh okay if you couldn't hear us the first half of this sorry we might actually have to is that giving it's us an error message right. no error message okay. that i can see sorry if the audio was this will be a good test for us <laughs> um i just suddenly went like it's not lit up so sorry if the audio was really crappy for the beginning part of this. Um, I'm getting over a migraine. That's my excuse. Yeah, and I wasn't paying attention. I didn't even hear that. Okay. Um, we're not going to redo this though. So uh, if you didn't hear us before now, go back and rewatch us with the volume turned up. Okay. Um, so, so let's look, address our questions. Looking at these again, one is pretty quick and I will go ahead and let's do that. Do that. We, one. we and love then... and respect all of our questions, but we might answer some quickly. The other two could be mixed in together or whatever. <laughs> uh, dear Becky and Lizzie, if you haven't already done it in tips and tricks, could you review the Kitchener stitch? Sincerely, fabulous Florida fiber fanatic. Okay, um, kind of quickly. First of all, there is a tips and tricks on Kitchener, and I think it's it's a pretty good one. I've had people who who look at it and say, I never understood it before, and now I can do it. But everybody learns differently. Um, techniques and stitching and that kind of stuff doesn't necessarily work in this format because we're so far from the camera it's going to be hard and you're going to be seeing it from a reverse angle it's all kinds of wonky tech check out tips and tricks but one thing i will say verbally which not everyone is going to remember or understand the verbal definition of some of this and that's okay watch me do it on the tips and tricks one of the things about kitchener it's it's a bind off with um, no seam that you sew. Lord Kitchener did not like seams in his socks. So when he wrote sock patterns, he grafted them. Yes, and that was mentioned in the um, New Yorker article mm -hmm. just recently about Ravelry and people were like, oh my God, I had no idea. Font of information here, by the way, but she can tell you all these funky names from knitting all come from sometimes people in the army and other things in history that he didn't it was it was during what, what it was world war one or two it was world war one I, I think the boer war mm -hmm. the um but i mean it yeah the, lots the of, article was talking yeah. about how it came into play because everyone was was knitting uh for the soldiers he and wrote sock patterns mm -hmm. for the army mm -hmm. and they didn't want the the scene because you already had people like living in the trenches and the mud and having something rubbing on your feet on top of all that oh plus he personally that. didn't like it yeah and there was that, so, but, but it worked. Um, so Kitchener, one of the things that, um, that 
I like to keep in mind when I'm doing Kitchener and the sewing, you're dealing with two stitches on the front and two stitches on the back. And again, this is not supposed to be instructional from the get go, go watch the video. But it reverses once you get into the technique. It's like you go into one, the front, the front needle, you go in knit purl, one stitch knit, the next stitch purl, and then you reverse it for the back. So the back one, you're going to go into the first one purl wise, the second one knit wise. And there's also a method to taking them off the needle and things. And I think to only try to describe it here without doing it and without is going to get confusing. But no, one of the things that can help keep you straight is front needle goes knit purl and back needle goes purl knit. And we're talking about individual stitches. And again, I think the way I've, I've packaged it on tips and tricks is really helpful. I'm I, biased, but I think it's really helpful I, and you should check that out. Everything I've heard you say also about the Kitchener mm -hmm. is there are, don't worry with the setup and you, you know, before you start our Kitchener stitch and you, are a very big fan of do the setup because mm -hmm. it looks better. The setup is only dealing with one stitch on the front and one stitch on the back. And um, it's like the second half of what I just said, which again, in just verbally saying it to the open air can sound really confusing. Watch the video. But once you get into the, the steps, you get into a mantra and you just have to go be like knit, 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 purl, purl, knit, knit, purl, purl, knit. And it's going back and forth and it's really keeping the rhythm and not getting distracted. So do it sometime when there aren't going to be any distractions around and you can do the whole thing at once. And for those of you who are new to knitting and go, well, I can't keep track of that without having it written down. Since I've been at the yarn shop and learned about the Kitchener Stitch, I have met people who have been knitting forever and still have to have it written down because mm -hmm. It's just one of those things yeah. that. Oh, for the longest time until I was yeah. helping people like ad nauseum at the shop, I had to look at it every the time first, I did the it. The first year and a half I worked here, we, we have a tin. We have a tin we, that has it on the lid. That has yeah. it on the lid. And somebody at the table would go, hey, where's the tin? Mm -hmm. You would say, hey, where's the tin? Yeah. Like I know. have it written down on my computer somewhere and I printed off copies for people. Um, you can probably, I think I have it written down in some fashion in the whiteboards I use on my tips and tricks. You can do a screenshot of that. It's probably way back on my Instagram feed because I, I tend to, I don't know if back then I was, I, I will post the, um, the whiteboards on my Instagram feed, but I did do this video a while ago and I will try to put it in the comments on this video so you can click to it. Okay. Moving on. Okay. I'm going to read the next two, um, questions at the same time not like are they intercombined links somehow i think they are mm -hmm. because they both talk about needles and instruments okay so um should i take notes yeah i mean one is <laughs> talking about what size needles do we use with our papillons and the other is talking about which do we prefer wood metal whatever but i think that they they can be joined or do you want me to separate no no that's okay. if you think you are the master of the of the questions Okay. Hmm. Well, they're in if my this, email. If this, so. goes, if this goes, yes, exactly. If this goes down in flames, it's my fault. <laughs> Stick with us. Okay, let's do it. Okay. The the first one is Dear Becky and Lizzie, do you prefer to use a metal or wooden bamboo needle for knitting or crocheting and why? Do you think the type of material used to make the needle affects the gauge? Also, do you prefer interchangeables or individuals? Which brand or brands do you prefer? Just curious in the mountains. And then the second one is Dear Becky and Lizzie, it seems that you have made papillons out of many weights of yarn. Could you please mention the needle sizes you use for each yarn size? Thanks, papillon lover. So where shall we start? Let's do the papillon one okay. first, if that's okay. We're in charge. We, no. Um, cause we can just go through that, <laughs> but that can lead to our next discussion. So, um, so let's start with the way the pattern what is size they're supposed to be, what is, what's supposed <laughs> to be happening with the papillon. All right. So this was my first papillon. I took it off the counter where it's hanging so we could show y'all, uh, the papillon, love it. such a fun pattern. I think I've mentioned it's the only pattern I've I've done really more than once in terms of like not for gifts for people or something. Sorry. 
yeah, you lost stitch marker. <laughs> um, so this is written for fingering weight on a size four. And this is how it looks. This is the size that it comes out. And I will say that, um, so using this as a guide in general, in general, a fingering weight yarn will say use a one to, to three needle on it. And, and Marin has written it for a size four. So in general, you want to go up at least a needle size or two from, um, from the weight of the yarn you are using. Let me just show real quick, Liz, because you've got all yes. the fun thick ones, right? So that one that I held up was a fingering weight on a four. Now this one, not necessarily a whole lot huger, but this one was sport weight, a really light sport weight on a five. Again, since the yarn was a little thicker or required a needle, suggested a needle a little thicker, I wanna say I need might suggest a size four needle. I went up to a five. I could have gone bigger as Liz will demonstrate. This is fingering on a nine. Mm -hmm. So, okay, fingering. And the caveat here, I have all those caveats. Um, everybody knits differently. So your gauge is not gonna be exactly the same as ours on these needles because everyone holds their tension differently. But for me, here is fingering weight. I can't, I can't grab the other side, no. Fingering weight on, on a four as written, fingering weight on a, nine. on a nine. Okay, same thickness of yarn. That's the thing. Thickness of yarn does not necessarily like lock you into a needle size. This is already written for a bigger needle than the yarn calls for. That was her first. Mm -hmm. I said, hold my beer. At the same time, remember, if you go back to the first episodes we were filming, we were making these at the same time, weren't we? Yeah. That mine, one's on a four. Mine can fit inside hers. This one's a ten and a half. Worsted weight yarn, much thicker yarn. So yarn weights, we have fingering, sport, DK, worsted, bulky or chunky, super bulky. The, so for, for me, I love going up in big needles. Mm -hmm. I have settled anything that's fingering uh, up to about DK, I've settled on a nine. I do have a couple of worsted that are on a nine also because I didn't have that much yarn and didn't want to play that much yarn chicken. Mm -hmm. But depending on how tall you are, a 10 and a half, like a 10 and a half on me, Her, the, it, it the goes tip to of it might be in the mud. <laughs> yeah. But again, this is on a five with, with sport weight yarn. I think I was doing a sport or a DK. The one I've stalled out on sport or DK is on um, a seven, but I haven't made it very my, far on that. My DK one that's in the window is on a, a mm -hmm. nine. Mm -hmm. um, this, my red and black that still has its ends not woven in. Is that 10? This is on a nine. It was on nine. Because I was terribly worried about running out of yarn. I had four skeins of Lorna's laces and I ran out before the pods were. Mm -hmm. And that, and that again was worsted weight. It was it's like, worsted it's a weight. light, Lorna's laces is a light worsted yeah. weight. Yeah. But, um, but that's on a nine. Yeah. And, and some of them, the bigger they get, the more they will stretch. Yes. So, um, like I said, I would recommend in general for any shawl really, but based on how Marin wrote the pattern, whatever thickness you choose to make it out of, go up at least one needle size from the recommended one in the pattern, but it's okay to go a couple sizes bigger. Or at least. even more than a couple. Mm -hmm. Like you've done worsted on like a 10, 10 and a half. 10 and a half. Yeah. I'm doing this one, my black one, because I want it to be very, very light and airy. It's fingering and on a 10. On a 10. Mm -hmm. So it just, it, because the Papillon doesn't have different sizes, and people ask online a lot, can, how do I make this bigger? Can I do a repeat of the third section? And most people would say no. The math involved unless, in that? Unless you're really good at math. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because the math is based on going going close to the center, going past the center, doing your back and forths of the squares and having them stack in the right direction. And 
every time you make it bigger because it's a symmetrical triangle shawl that starts in the center and gets bigger as it goes. And by the time you're trying to add another section, you have more stitches than the pattern calls for. Yeah. And you have to figure out the math. If you're good visually saying, well, I'm gonna go past the center to this point and do this. If you wanna make it up, awesome. But if you wanna do something that's in line with the pattern based off of what the pattern says, it's a lot of counting based on already knowing what's going on in the pattern. And you don't have to overthink it because you follow the pattern as written, it will work. But it, so the way to make it bigger, bigger needles. One one of the 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 projects on Ravelry's project page for the Papillon, somebody was like, "I'm doing it out of worsted on like an eight, and they felt it was too big at the end of section two, so they bound off. They're not you. <laughs> I like ginormous shawls. Mm -hmm. When my the one that I have on ten and a half. It covers me from wrist to neck on both sides and goes all the way down to my ankle, mm -hmm. if not further, depending on the day. And <laughs> you know, um, if you're taller, that will suit you beautifully. Mm -hmm. Fingering, I wouldn't really push more than a nine or a ten, just because it gets very light, um, uh, see through, you yeah. know. But it. It's fun it's to play with. Preference. You're going to need more yarn. Yes, that's the thing. You you need to overestimate how much yarn you, you're using or will need if you're either doing it in a different weight or on a, a different, different needle size. size. I, I will say with like nines, and I've always needed two of my contrast color. Mm -hmm. I don't need very much of the second ball, but I always need a second ball. And depending on the weight of the yarn, I'll need four plus bolts, mm -hmm. depending on the yardage. So if you like the way this looks, like the the openness of the stitches, the visibility, all that kind of thing for it. Again, this was fingering on a four. Um, sport weight, I would do on a five or a six. Depends because again, this was a light sport weight. A thicker sport weight, a heavier sport weight, you might want to go up to a six. Um, a DK, I'd probably do on a seven, maybe or push it to an eight. eight. Yeah. yeah. Um, worsted, nine or ten. You could go to a ten and a half and still be okay because it's it's not that much bigger at that it, point. It will get large. Yeah. Like it'll be huge, but they'll be wonderful. It'll yeah. Be like a blanket. You get to wear a blanket around. Um, if you're gonna make it out of like a chunky, I I do it on a thirteen probably. I, 11 at least 13. If you're doing it any bigger than a 10 and a half, mm -hmm. like I'd say my Papillon is a good four and a half, almost five feet long when it's you're, you're making out. a blanket at that point. You're not making something you're going to wear unless you're, you're tall. Unless you're tall, which I, we're not. <laughs> I'm five one, mm -hmm. so you know or maybe five four. I maybe. I would if you the further up you go, the bigger it's going to be, get. So mm -hmm. unless you're like five ten. I wouldn't go up to a 13, just if you ever want to wear oh, it. Oh, that's the thing. So, yeah. I mean, but as an experiment, you know, it if someone wants fun. a recommendation for that, that's what we're going to do. I make. do want to make one out of the baby or the, the She wants the to make some, baby like, yes, she wants to make the baby butts and unicorn kisses. And that she's probably going to have to do on like an 11 at the or smallest a or a 13. But I'm thinking about just doing the first two sections. Yeah. Because and you could, it put, would you be could too even big. put eyes into yeah. the, the Pokemon mm -hmm. balls on the second section yeah. and do uh, uh, some kind of variation of the bind off. And yeah. She could make it work. So, anyway, and that would cut down the number of colors you need, maybe. And the yardage. Like, the chunkier you go, the less yards mm -hmm. you have on a ball. So, it's going to eat up yarn like nobody's business. So, let's go to the, um, the other question that we have. And that was about wood versus metal. Okay, I've got a metal hook here. Um, for knitting or crocheting, what do we prefer? Does it affect your gauge? All these kinds of fun questions. And we'll address what we can in the time remaining, which means again, all these fun yarns of colors and things I wanna show off to y'all, you might just have to go on the online shop and, and hunt around and look and some other day, maybe Tuesday, Maybe today. I don't know. We'll see what we have time for. To show off all the new yummy colors we have. Um, so the metal versus wood debate, right? 
Um, I will start by saying that I, when I'm teaching how to do stitches, for the most part, in, if I can in both knitting and crochet, I will try to use wood. And the reason I do that is wood is not as slippery. And so um, a lot of people, I feel like a lot of people who try intro knitting and maybe give up on it, they've bought at Joann's or Michael's or Walmart. Uh, they've bought the the intro knitting kits that are there. Slicker than snot on a doorknob and not in a good way. Because it's aluminum needles. And aluminum is affordable when, you, when we're talking about metal. Any metal is going to be kind of slippery. Um, and aluminum is going to be cheap and slippery, which again, when you're starting out, you don't want to spend a lot of money. Not a problem. I understand that. Um, but I really recommend wood when you're learning to knit and possibly when you're learning to crochet too. I'll get into crochet hooks a little bit more later because it's a whole nother beast in a way. Um, I teach on the Brittany birchwood needles. I find the bamboo needles that most people sell are pretty like clover are pretty good too. The downside to wood can be that they're not as pointy when it comes to needles. It's kind of the flip side when it comes to crochet hooks. It's funny. Yeah. But so, and pointy can sometimes be um, help with success because you're being able to, to shove in and, and not having nubby things fall off. The nubbiness of needles can sometimes mean that yarn won't catch well or you can't stick it through where you need to. You wind up with splitty yarn. Mm -hmm. You can split with sharp. Needles yeah, too. but you know, um, but that can be I've, I've seen people bring in old clovers with nubby tips on them and they kind of struggle sometimes even with thicker yarn to get the needle where it needs to go. And so for greater success, you know, um, chow goo has really good wood needles with sharp tips for wood, you know, but um, wood is good when you don't want your yarn to slip around a lot. Like if we're going to kind of semi transition to fiber. Um, and I'm keeping it to needles right now. We can switch to hooks in a second. Um, wood is, is really good if you're using a fiber that's really slippery. So I've, I've heard of people who will use wood with plant fibers a lot because again, it helps catch it. It helps, there's not a lot of elasticity to plant fibers. And so having something that's rigid and a slick needle can sometimes be challenging, right? I, when we were doing the Eileen market bag out mm. of linen, I put my chow goos out and Woo. <laughs> my, the nice thing about the linen is it kept all the stitches so it's, you could just slide it there. back through. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's, it's more slick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So sometimes you want to counteract the slickness of your fiber with a needle that's not as slick. Um, but I got to say, honestly, 90% of the time I am knitting on metal. I like my chow goos. Um, they're not quite different. Metals will have different slipperinesses to them. Addies are really slick. Chow goos have a little more stick or grit to them, but they're still pretty smooth. You know, I, I just love the cords on my chow goos. Cords no are, are my top. I mm -hmm. like the pointy of chow goo. I love the slippy of Addy. Mm -hmm. But Addie's cords and tips aren't as pointy or mm -hmm. even the Addie free. turbos that are supposed yeah. are they're supposed to be pointier than the rockets. Where's the other way around? It's the other way around. Yeah. Rockets are pointier than the turbos. They're still not as pointy as Chow Goose. I've heard yeah. that Haya Hayas are even pointier. And then the ultimate is going to be signature needles. Haya Hayas and signatures we do not carry in the shop. Um, and but I saw when I was doing research before I started the shop, there was a debate going about Haya Hayas versus Chow Goose. And some people were like, they're really, really close. The winner for me was the Chow Goose, A, because they're easier for me to acquire, and B, because the, the cable, a no memory cable really was the kicker for me. Um, the, the addendum to the wood needles is we have the likey needles, which almost transition us to crochet hooks. Yeah, I have a stop um, before you go there. Yes. Okay. I won't go to crochet hooks yet. But likey needles, they're not, they're not going to be super sharp, but they are wood, but they have a slick varnish on them. So that you some people like wood because it feels warmer in their hands. It doesn't feel as cold. 
So lichy needles will have the warmth of wood and almost the slipperiness of metal. So for some people who want a sticky needle, lichy may, may be borderline for them, but I, they're a very well-made wooden needle. Um, the, the, the stick in there. Mm -hmm. I like plastic double points, but not any plastic. The it's the prints. Mm -hmm. And they are not sharp, pointy. Mm -hmm. They actually have the little bulb on the end. But they, like, I, I tend to use my Chowgu and my Prim double points. If I can't find Prim double points, I, I like a pointier, mm -hmm. you know, metal double point. <laughs> um, but those um, are my go-to, mm -hmm. like, for almost every project. We do have to address the, do we like interchangeable or um But was that part fixed? of the question? Yes. Okay, hang on, we'll come back to that. Oh, I'm not going to crochet hooks yet either, so we can still come back to that okay. right now. But what I did want to address was the, does it change your gauge? That depends. Um, I, you were, you were, I was, what were you gonna say? It depends on the brand. Yes, I think it's much more dependent on the brand than on the material. Because we have, like Marin was saying, that that um, different needles. I like to do two circular, knitting in the round with two circulars with two separate needles, like by different companies. Because then I can tell, am I starting around or am I finishing around? And um, I've never had a super noticeable difference in, in gauge, but I'm not necessarily paying attention really closely either. And with different brands, there are the slightest differences, and I mean, they are like hundreds of a millimeter different between brand to brand. Mm -hmm. So like some, Rebecca always talks about sticking it through the, the needle gauge and some will go through the hole and some will have a see little bit it, room. See where of it room. sticks. If it's yeah. got wiggle room, if it's tight. Um, Addies, in my experience, tend to be the wonkiest when going through a needle gauge. And they are of German, uh, construction, like when they're made in a country that doesn't use the same measurements or perhaps the same techniques as another country, that's going to throw them off. Yeah. A lot of German companies, what they'll call a US 2 is actually a, what we would call US 2.5. Like the millimeter just kind of out of whack and different, but only down there where they're teeny tiny. Yeah. So it's really weird. But, um, but yeah, there'll be, I had a knitter once when I first opened the shop who said, okay, I have to make a sweater and I have to transition between needles and use double points. And I tried to knit my gauge swatch with sevens across the board. And every set that I used, I got a different gauge. And, and my question, I was a little stumped at the time being a new to the yarn business shop owner, even though I was not new to knitting. And I said, well, are they all made by the same company? And the answer was no. And I said, all I can think is that, you know, your double points maybe may are made by Clover and your circulars are made by Susan Bates. And so some of that could have to do with the material, but some of that also could have to do with the manufacturer. I, I noticed that like early days before you open the shop, I noticed with crochet hooks before I started knitting, depending on who make the G crochet hook. And I noticed it most in the G because, you know, I go to my drawer nice and I middle. grab a G. Some of them were 4.0 millimeters and some were 4.25. Which is not a common size. No, because and a seven is a 4.5. Mm -hmm. But if you happen to grab the wrong one in the middle of a project, it's a quarter of a millimeter, which is eventually going to mm -hmm. show. It'll shift things. And so. it was, it Even was a show. It might, yeah, affect. it was manufactured. Yeah. That, you and know. yeah. And I've seen, um, I think it's the P hook or bigger again, if you're going to do, and even on this gauge, some of the bigger sizes of needles and hooks company to company, they will be different. Mm -hmm. Um, there's, there's like, this says 15, 17, 19, 35, 50, but there's some who have a size 36 needle instead of a 35, but they mm -hmm. might actually be talking about the same thing. Um, old gauges of this would talk about a 16, which I think is, it's the P. Mm -hmm. There is no 16 in knitting needle. Uh, it, but it would get, it gets a little wonky. Um, I, I would recommend if you do a gauge swatch 
on a certain needle of a certain brand, I would knit your piece in the same brand, you know, that kind of thing. I wouldn't just pick up any old seven and do a gauge swatch and say, well, this works for this yarn and this needle and we're fine. It could shift. It could shift ever so slightly. I haven't noticed a huge problem myself, but knowing that other, other knitters have, I would just caution you against that. And some of that could be where your, I don't care bar is. Yes. Where like, is your, is it, is it, it's going to mess everything up or uh, I, so what, you know, is, is it, is it in um, a Liz or a Sarah Beth range <laughs> or is it in more of a like Amy, Amy Davis range? Shout out to Amy Davis. We love you. And Sarah Beth. <laughs> um, now, transitioning to crochet hooks. Do we want to do the interchangeable before? Oh, yes. Yes. Sorry. This is why she's here, amongst other reasons. Interchangeable versus fixed. What was the part of that specifically? Do we prefer one or the other? We both own both. Yeah. I well, have so many projects on needles. It really doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. I, most of my inner, I have interchangeable sets. I don't touch right now because everything's in projects. And, and so I need more. So I go to the fixed. It's really a matter of, here's my thing about interchangeables. I love them. I love that you can um, change out the length of the cord as you're going to get more space in there. Yes. I love that um, you can switch needles as you're going, if you need to go from ribbing to the next, you switch out one needle, just have to remember to switch out the other when you're done with the row. The versatility and if you can get over the initial investment price, the cost effectiveness of having an interchangeable set is great in the long run. It's compact, it's organized, you can supplement it in 16 million different ways. Here's my butt. <laughs> um, and I sell a lot of interchangeable sets and I stand by them. The but is that no join is perfect between your needle and your cable. I have found issues with just about every join, whether it's complicated to put them together or um, they, they could potentially come apart while you're knitting if you're not paying attention type of thing. I will never, um, for what we carry, I will never say it's the quality of the set, whether the needles stay together or not like the needles stay attached to the cables. Um, if you want a needle that is less likely to come off while you're knitting, I recommend Addie's. And we have sets here. Honestly, we've never sold an Addie set of interchangeables because we love our chow goose so much. But 90% um, of the interchangeable sets that are on the market and that we have in the shop are ones that twist together. So the, um, it, you either have the threads are on the tip and the chamber that it's, that it's twisting into is on the, the cable. And I think that is the chow goo that's is. the chow goo. And they're kind of exclusionary that way. Because people on Knit and Chat were like, I love the cables, but I want to put different tips on them. Or I need bigger tips than they make. And it's like, sorry, you're done. Um, and then a lot of other sets will have the threads are on the cable. And the chamber it goes into is on the needle. Likeys. Um, Knitter's Pride. Knitter's Pride. We carry Likes in the shop. Knitter's Pride, we don't carry in the shop, but um, you can use the Likey cords with their tips and you can use the Likey tips on their cords. And knit picks, you know, all of those. But they're all based on a system of, of tightening them, screwing them into each other and tightening them up. And here's where two tools become absolutely essential to try to get a good tight seal. Um, it's the pin that comes with it that, that usually goes through a little hole on the cable. And often when I say it, they call it a key and often it will look like a T pin or it might just look like a little curly, you know, straight rod. T pin with the, the sharp mm -hmm. sanded down. Or something that looks like it could be a T pin, but doesn't have the flat top, but yeah. there's no pointy on the other end. Yeah. So when I can't find my key, I use a T pin, <laughs> but you can, you can put it in as torque and hold it so you can really twist um, the, the tip on. The other thing can be something rubber. We sell chowgu little rubber grippers, but like the rubber thing that you would use to open a jar with to help grip the metal and twist. You do not want to over tighten. I've mm -hmm. stripped cords on or stripped threads on one of my needles. Those will have the smoothest join. Once you get it tightened on it, they should be nice and smooth. It, if you ever catch, people don't like interchangeable sometimes because 
it's not smooth sliding your work up onto the needle. And with a lot of our twist ons, if that happens, it's because they're starting to come apart and you need to stop and get it out of the, the, the yarn out of that gap and tighten it back up again. Now the Addies I was mentioning before, and we're starting to run short on time. The Addies I was mentioning before, they have a, you put it on and you twist and, and it locks in place. So you don't need to spin it. And you, you really, for the most part, unless you put weird pressure on it, don't need to worry about it coming undone. That's the benefit of Addies is they're more guaranteed to stay in, in the interchangeable on there. The flip side to that is it's not a smooth join. It's, it might not bug you. It's again, where's your I don't care bar? But it's not as smooth of a join. So if you are more worried about your tips falling off and don't care about the smooth join, go with an addy. If you want a smooth join, tighten them well. Don't don't strip your threads, and go with one of the twist interchangeables. There's other like um, the the squares that we have. I've never gotten an interchangeable set to sell to the public because it's got you need a special clampy key to unhook it. It stays on once it's in, but it was it was difficult. I wasn't going to sell something I couldn't use well myself. Um, but again, to follow that up, the fixed ones, you don't have to worry about that, but you're going to have a lot. If you want the lengths you want and the sizes you want, you're going to have a lot of needles to keep track of. I, I would, and it gets expensive. I would almost say if you have five projects or less on needles consistently, mm -hmm. Rebecca and I are not consistent in that the an interchangeable set is great because you know you can you have the needles available and and if you're gonna be doing a wide range of knitting yes. from small needles to big needles if yes. you don't if you only knit worsted weight yarn on like sevens to nines you don't need a whole set you know my um, money's in nines 40 inch to ten and a half she inch. owns more nines and tens and ten and a half than we have ever at one time in the shop basically but you know, to keep in stock. So I don't want a short shift crochet. Um, crochet hooks, but we have an appointment coming in soon. So um, here's my thing with crochet hooks. The, the metal ones that we have, we do not carry the Susan Bates or the Boyer or those types, but I think I have the same issue with them as I do with the uh, more hooks that we mm -hmm. do carry that I do like. The metal ones don't tend to have a sharp tip on the end. This one's small, this one's a little bigger. The, the tip is kind of nubby. The metal ones, especially these ergonomic ones, are great if you have hand pain or if you hold like this, there's a great grip to them. Um, and they're slicker. If you like the slickness when, with crocheting, if you like something that moves and gives, metal can be great. But I like a nice point on the end of my crochet hook. And here's the crazy thing. It's like we're talking about the, the wood knitting needles don't have a sharp tip. The wood crochet hooks have a much better point mm -hmm. for like really being able to navigate spaces and push through, which you push through a lot in crochet. And right, and with the lacquered crochet hooks, mm -hmm. they're almost as fat as slick. Like the likey hooks that we have, so much. Not I like them. It's funny because we both talk about um, even this one's nice. It's bigger because it's really big. Um, this we is, both this talk is about we prefer metal knitting, but we both prefer wood crochet. Mm -hmm. So um, Knitter's Pride, I, I I will use their hooks. My favorite favorite hooks are the Likies mm -hmm. because there's no thumb divot, which yes. some people are like, I need the thumb divot. I, I didn't know I didn't need it until I found a hook that didn't have it. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is like life changing. This is an M. I know it blends in with my M in the Knitter's Pride Dreams. And it's, you know, could be sharper. This is an, uh, an this is an N, M in the Likey. And look at that tip. Yeah, look how sharp point. that is. Beautiful point. No thumb divot, but then it means you, you actually have more flexibility in where you hold it. And more room, working room. And these are these are lacquered, so these have a nice varnish, so they're nice and slick. So I mean, when it comes to crochet hooks, the likey ones really are our go-to hooks. And sometimes when they're having production issues, like they are sometimes right now, it's challenging because because we sell more of these than anything else. But yeah, it's funny. Like on the whole, 
given our druthers and not caring about fiber, which honestly, usually I'm not really particular about matching a wood with a fiber or a metal with a fiber. Yeah. You can, I don't really care. Um, I tend to knit with metal a lot more and I tend to crochet almost exclusively with wood. I'll use these, they're wonderful, especially when I'm helping people learn, it can help with their grip. But sometimes that tip is a struggle. Sometimes the, the, the smoothness of this is a struggle. So smooth, slick, nice tip, wonderful. Yeah, I always find that funny when people are like wood or metal and I'm like, depends on what craft. And that's like people coming in and asking us, well, what's better or easier, knit or crochet? And it's like- Depends on what craft. It, it, well, they're different Into crafts. Year. Into, yeah, yeah, it's like, that's, that's a very subjective question. Very subjective question. So, um, yeah, we got to wrap up because we have an appointment coming in. I kind of figured we were going to run out of time because that's such a good question. And we're probably not done talking about that question, but we've at least scratched the surface. So, if you want to ask us a question and want to hear us ramble about something related to knitting or crochet, please write us at Dear Becky and Lizzie, 35 South Broad Street, Brevard, North Carolina, 28712, or you know me, Liz, at sundragonartandfiber.com. All right. I was still thinking about the zip code. I was like, that sounds wrong, but it- 28712. Um, we have knit night tomorrow night. Please join us 6 to 9 p.m. Use the shop phone number 828-877-3550 to enter. And that's Eastern Standard Time. And other than that, we will see you next Tuesday because we have to go. Subscribe, Bye. like we're getting so close. We're at 490. We do. We're at 490. We have 10 people till we can have a nice big sale. I had someone who commented, Michelle Little was like 490. Ah! So every, if 10 people find a friend to subscribe, or if you're one of the people who hasn't subscribed yet, you could help us get to a sale and be like the superhero. Okay, bye. <laughs>